Good morning everyone and welcome to another edition of Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth, that's BIBLE News. I'm your host, Gabriel Angel. Our top story today, Tongues of Fire, Great Sermon. For more, let's go get some analysis and the story from Emily. So I'm going to tell you the story of Pentecost and that is in the Bible in Acts. What is Pentecost? This is a very special time in the Bible when the disciples and other Christians received the Holy Spirit. Before I explain why and how this happened, there's a few things you need to know first. God didn't pick just any day for this to happen. Like everything God does, he has a specific time and purpose and reason for it, and Pentecost was no exception. Pentecost occurred 50 days after Easter Sunday or 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus had already gone back to heaven, so the disciples and new believers of Jesus were waiting to receive the Holy Spirit, because that's what Jesus told them would happen. Plus, since Jesus wasn't with them anymore, the Holy Spirit would bring them closer to God. Just before Jesus was taken up to heaven, he told them that they would receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on them, and they'd be his witnesses to the whole world. Even more, he told them much earlier that the Counselor, or Helper, or Holy Spirit would be sent by the Father, that he would teach them all the things and remind them of everything that he had said to them. So, the Holy Spirit is super helpful to us. He becomes a part of us when we become a Christian and understand that Jesus died and rose for us. When we're ready to try and live a pleasing life to God, the Holy Spirit becomes part of us, so we have a part of God with us all the time. The day of Pentecost was a little bit different, though. People had already become Christians, but the Holy Spirit wasn't a part of them yet. This would be the first time everyone who was a Christian would receive the Holy Spirit. Pentecost was a day to celebrate the end of the grain harvest. It was like Thanksgiving for us in Canada, when the farmers have collected their crops and all the hard work is done. The people would offer two loaves of bread that they had made from their crops and two lambs were waved before the Lord as a thank offering. This was their special way of thanking God for the weather and for helping them get that crop that year. The disciples and other Christians had come together to thank God and suddenly a sound like a blowing of strong winds came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. I have a feeling the windows weren't open either. Next, they saw tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. I'm not sure if they could see the tongues of fire or if that's just how the people could explain what they felt was happening. When the tongues of fire came, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in different languages. They may have used the words tongues of fire to explain the way that the fire was speaking. It was the way to describe the Holy Spirit. Either way, they all got pretty excited, and things got a little bit noisy. It says there were people of many different nationalities staying in Jerusalem, all of them speaking different languages. These people ran over to see what all the noise was about, and were surprised to hear their own languages spoken throughout the group. The Bible lists up to 16 different places where these people were from, and their own language was being spoken. Things must have sounded crazy. Imagine all these people speaking many different languages at the same time and shouting out praises to God, excited that something amazing from God had just happened. It was no surprise that the crowd had gathered to check out what was happening and thought that something special must have been happening. After all, they weren't there when the Holy Spirit came to them. So some of the crowd started making fun of them and saying that they had too much wine to drink and that was making them act funny. When Peter started to hear these rumors, he raised his voice to the crowd. He explained they weren't drinking wine because it was only nine in the morning. Plus, the people celebrating Pentecost didn't eat or drink till at least ten in the morning. He explained that Joel, a messenger of God's word, said that this very thing could happen a long time ago. God usually would tell a prophet when something important was going to happen, way before it actually happened. Just like the Bible told us a Savior, Jesus was going to come and save us long before Jesus was even born. Peter continued and explained how God brought Jesus to them and that they had crucified him. The crowd understood and felt responsible for doing this and they wanted to know what they could do now. 
Peter explained that they should repent, which means say sorry and stop doing the bad things, and be baptized so that others would know that they believe in God and were trying to change. Now, because of Jesus' death and his resurrection, people could be forgiven and receive the Holy Spirit from now on. That means we receive the Holy Spirit when we accept Christ or become Christians. The word Christian actually means Christ in us. The special thing about having the Holy Spirit is that God never leaves us, so we can talk to him or ask for help any time. The Holy Spirit actually helps us in many ways. He comforts, teaches, helps us grow in our relationship with God, and gives us strength to get out of the bad habits in our lives. He also gives us power and helps us know when we've done something wrong. Of course, we need to want to grow, learn, and change to be more like God for the Holy Spirit to really work in us. So Pentecost was super special for the disciples and special for us even now because that was the start of us receiving the Holy Spirit and being able to ask for forgiveness. Thank you for that, Emily. And now for this week's weather, let's go to Noah. Hello world, Noah here with your weather report. This week is, looks like another week of spring here in Atlantic Canada. We got some cold nights and mornings, warming up in the afternoon, a little bit of sunshine, a little bit of rain. So be prepared for anything. All right. <coughs> oh, and it's cold season. Bye. Thank you for that, Noah. And now for this week's craft and activity, let's go to Emily. The craft this week for the story of Pentecost is based on the verse Acts 2-3. Then what looked like flames or tongue of fire appeared and settled on each one of them. And so in your craft bag, you're going to have a piece of paper and a little bit of red, orange, maybe some yellow paint. And you can put it on your paper like this in just kind of blobs. And then you're going to take a straw that will also be in your bag and you're going to blow on the paint. And you can do that as much as you want to mix it around. And it's like we're creating a little fire and it's the fire spreading. And yeah, so super easy, super fun. And I like playing with paint, so even better. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you for that, Emily. Looks like another great activity this week. And now for this week's entertainment hour, let's go to Psalms. Hey, cool cats, and welcome back to Psalms Entertainment Hour. You just heard the story of Pentecost, when all of a sudden these disciples in the upper room, they got the Holy Spirit. And you heard about tongues of fire coming down, and how they were able to speak other languages, and then how people tried to say, oh, no, it's nothing big, and the disciples said, Oh, yes it is. You listen here. We've got a story to tell. Well, you know what? We still have a story to tell today. In fact, you might say we have a light to shine. Can you guess what song we're singing? That's right. We're singing this little light of mine. So get that light out. And here we go. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. All over the world. I'm going to let it shine. All over the world. I'm going to let it shine. All over the world, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. The course again, one more time, oh, this little light of mine, 
I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Wow, great singing, guys. You know what? I can see your little lights from all the way over here. Great job, everyone. And you know what? Until next week, keep them lights shining. Thank you for that, Psalms. Well, that's all we have this week. Thank you again for tuning in to Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. That's B-I-B-L-E News. I'm your host, Gabriel Angel, reminding you, good day and good news.